But the reporter published a paper that was read far and wide in an article saying, well, we know that George Adams carved a human track. He buried it because it was so good. Now we know which track it was, inferring that it was the Delk track. In error. Then we acquired this Paluxy track. One of the criticisms leveled has been that this is not Glen Rose limestone. Doesn't matter where it came from, if it's a human and dinosaur cohabitation, it has the same power of destruction. But this demonstrates with the traces of what we call Thalassinoides, a little creature, and the worm burrows in both of them. They're both from the same area. But now the gratification moment. Just days before the production of this telecast, a friend of mine, Pastor Dennis Moore of the Grace Baptist Church of Glen Rose, Pastor is one of the great grandchildren of the Adams, very respected, a highly respected family. And the old family place was being torn down. The cellar and the rocks around it, and, and the base for the home that George Adams built is now being demolished for a parking lot. So the pastor was given permission with his metal detector to see if he could find some old coins. As the heavy equipment moved the rocks and started to tear them up, Pastor Moore worked among them. He found some old coins, but that's not all. Came to the museum. He was all excited. He said, you need your camera. He found the human footprint that George Adams carved and reburied. It has a great dominant toe, slightly artificial, second, third, fourth little toe. It does not have the deep depression of the second toe. Has the form of the human foot, but it also has the markings, telltale markings of a round cold chisel punch that he used as he cut into the stone, and you can see when he finished the beautiful carving, it was level. However, it had fractured the material underneath, and during the decades of burial and exposure to the elements, the fractured limestone broke apart, and you can see actual chisel marks under the surface because of the fracture of the limestone throughout the entire print that is not seen on this surface or this, any of this. He worked a little bit of the surface here or there, but the only place this is seen is in the footprint itself. Then we took these for spiral CAT scan. Watch closely. In the spiral CAT scan, we found the compression lines ran throughout the surface of the stone there was no weight distribution, that's a carving. In the second layer, in the very thin layers of the spiral CT scan, we find the areas that were affected by the cold chisel round punch that he used to carve it. In contradistinction, let us now very closely look at the tracks, other tracks that we have to see if they are genuine. Here we have the delt print. Here we have the clear compression in the right areas around the dinosaur track. This is a very thin slice. Have the compression around the central toe. And we have the compression outline of the human footprint. Other slices show the other toes. Around the great toe, we have the compression and around it and the forward compression around it. And where the compression was already made because the man stepped first, the dinosaur push some of that consolidated material forward, and a higher cut in the CT scan shows the other toes very clearly, the compression around them, ahead of them, and between them. This is genuine. Back to the Burdick print. We ran the same compression lines between the toes, ahead of the toes, whiter material, meaning greater compression, around it here, whiter material, in the dense area uh, near the instep and around the transfer of weight, this is lighter, meaning compression was there. This Burdick print is genuine. The Paluxy print is genuine. The Delk print is genuine. 
The will it print is genuine. That means that Job chapter 40, in its description of man living contemporaneous with dinosaurs, has now been verified scientifically. We've solved the mystery of the carved footprint, the one that remained, that was so good, was buried. We have named it, and it is officially canonized as Adam's slash more footprint because of the carver and then the discoverer of recent times. Our commendation is extended to the Adams family for their candor and honesty all these years. We're going to give this original now to the Adams family. We have replicas that we'll be using on future programs. The mystery has been solved. The carved print was found, the one that was good enough to fool even some scholars. It was found and because of modern spiral CAT scan, these have been demonstrated to be genuine. Man and dinosaur did live contemporaneously. That's what the Word of God states. But the Word of God doesn't stop there. Man has a state of accountability that he must admit. We're sinners. But Jesus Christ came, lived his life. We crucified him. He was buried rose again and lives so that you might have eternal life. Would you just open your heart to him right now and pray this simple prayer. Just pray this prayer with me. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I've found that your word is true. I want to receive your son who died for me. Lord Jesus, right now I open my heart to you. Right now step into my heart and live and I will serve you with all my heart. Welcome home. Creation in the 21st Century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today.